Hi, this is Patrick from STH. Today we're going to show you how to change your Supermicro X10 SDV fan into something that's a copper active heatsink. The X10 SDV is one of their Xeon D boards. You can see that this is a example of a passive heatsink, which works really well on a server, but doesn't work so well if you're going to be using it in a uh, desktop case. This is an example of a Xeon D board with Supermicro's active cooler. And you can see this works really well if you have it in a desktop or mini tower case. And so if you buy a board with a passive heatsink, you may want to change it over to an active heatsink. And we found a way to do that with using copper heatsinks. So first step is simply to unscrew the heatsink that comes with it. So we're going to speed this video, video up quite a bit. And here it just popped off, but what we did to get it to pop off was we actually heated up the heatsink beforehand. So you can see that we got it up to about 56 degrees centigrade. Certainly not something you want to touch, but very easy to work with once you do. Once the heatsink is off, the next step is to change the back plate so that way we can use some of the other fan options available in 51 millimeter mounting point. You can see that most of the fans have screws that are too small for the standard Supermicro mounting point, so what we need to do is remove this back plate. First off, you need to be grounded if you're going to even try this, but what we did was we took the stock heat sink, we screwed it into the back mounting plate, supported the motherboard very well from below, and then we pushed until we heard the adhesive break slightly. You cannot push too hard, you need to be very gentle, and there is a very real risk to damaging your motherboard. This will void your warranty. The next step is you move on to the other sides and the other four corners, and if you jiggle, push gently, you can actually get the adhesive to unstick. Once you have the motherboard backing removed, what you can do, or at least loosened, what you can do is flip the board over and pull it off. Apologies, this is blurry town. We bought new video equipment just because of this. So next time, it'll certainly be much better. But the exercise is basically you pull off the old mounting bracket, you take off the adhesive protector on the new bracket, and you place that new bracket very carefully into the mounting point holes. You do have to be very careful because there are traces just below this mounting point, so you have to check for shorts. Again, this is definitely going to void your warranty, but it's certainly doable. At this point, it's time to put on our new thermal solution. We're going to use our Cool Jag active copper unit. There are a bunch of other units available, but it's as simple as screwing this unit in. You do have to be very careful though. Uh, alternate between the four corners because you this does not have the same protection from over tightening the heatsink solution. So you can actually, because there's a Broadwell DE SOC below this, you can actually over tighten these heat sinks and damage your processor or motherboard. It will rent you because it's not a socketed processor. You're going to lose the entire thing. Um, and they will be able to tell that you did this if you try returning it for a warranty. So be very careful. At this point, you have a completed solution. The heat sink is secure both through the screws, but also through the backing plate of the motherboard. You can see some of the other options for the X10 SDV if you do go this route. We have a Dynatron unit, which is good for a 1U chassis. Dynatron units are fairly popular. We'll have the model number on the serve the home post. We, there's also a 2U copper version, which you can see over to the right. That 2U copper version is a giant passive heatsink which is great if you're going to use 
the Xeon D boards in a larger chassis, or you're going to want passive airflow. All of the Supermicro Xeon D heatsinks currently utilize a 1U design, and so that is a larger option. You can also see the stock heatsink as well as the stock active heatsink. Um, and one, one quick item I want to point out, which is do not do this. So I did a test fitting of seeing if the heatsink would actually install in the incorrect orientation. If you have the heatsink fins aligning to the RAM slots and the PCIe slot, you have it done correctly. If the heatsink fins are pointing towards the RAM slots and the PCIe slot, then that's the incorrect orientation. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more cool videos.